So, we were talking about mental blindness. One is physical blindness, another is mental blindness. Mental. Uh, <coughs> yeah, here you go, John. So, mental blindness and intellectual blindness creates a strong ego. We get obsessed. We stop thinking. We stick to one idea. What is that one idea? For example, the moment every time you see Sophie, you say, no, she is not good. First thought that comes, even if she is the best. <laughs> I know John uh, <laughs> is the best. Example, Sophie, don't get uh, upset. Oh, OK. I don't see her smile. Sir. Oh, she has gone. So you see that. Understand this point. We seldom, we seldom recognize. We don't recognize that we are mentally and intellectually blind. Because if I'm intellectually blind, I do not want to think the other way, except the one that is keeping my mind and gazed about a person, about an event, about a thing. You know, have you heard about uh, people have a phobia about height, about darkness? It is because of this. That is also one type of mental blindness. See the other point. And it normally, it takes place in our relationship. So you have to check. In order to make your mind free, you have to check. Is there any mental and intellectual blindness? No, no, she is bad. She or he is bad. But no person is 100% bad or good. This is what the intellect says. Do you agree? Say yes. We agree. You see, it is our intellect which is open. Nobody is 100% bad, 100% good. It's always shortcomings are always there. But we seldom think like this with our close and near and dear ones. Oh, no, no, he has this typical attitude. Well, he's not going to change. It's OK. It's OK. No. So we are storing a lot of impressions in our mind, and one day it will blast. And it is based on what we like, what we dislike. No, I have caused that mental blindness because of my likes and dislikes. Do you see that? And then what happens? Our personality and attitude start changing. We want to force everyone to agree with us, even when we are wrong. We want to cry a lot, repent on the past. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, that was the worst day I got married to you. Do you see that? Ten years ago. So we have to get rid of this mental blindness. So those people who cry a lot, repent on the past, you blame, you complain, we react to others easily, instantly. You rely on your experience and your ego becomes stronger. And we are mentally blind. We live in delusion. And when we live in delusion, we are bound to suffer. We are bound to suffer. 
never be near those people who always tries to narrate a story of blame, complaint, reaction, delusion. I hope when you meet each other, one another, <coughs> you don't tell your story of something. <laughs> That's good. That's good, John. <coughs> the moment you tell and you see that you are repeating the same story again and again every time you meet, why? The other is ready to listen. Other is interested. Oh, then what happened? Oh, then what happened? Oh, let's come, you know, let me prepare a cup of tea, then I will listen to your story. Listen to good stories. You know. Be very clear about this. When someone, one time story, I have to take a life history of people, you know, when I do a private lesson, but I don't want to listen to the story again. I have already heard it. I know the cause. And then we start working on the solution. So there our master guides us that when that attitude, those thoughts are repeating itself in our mind, we have to sit down. We have to... Now, have you heard about windows? John might be knowing, you know. Now, um, you also, you guys also know it. You know, when we have an a new window platform, window level. So we have to uninstall and we have to reinstall in the same computer. Same thing, we have to uninstall the old software that is mind, which is constantly blind, and we have to reinstall. Reinstall with the knowledge. And that knowledge is Shreyas. The word is known as the Shreyas. Shreyas means what is good and right in my life. At least we are human beings. We know it. We can easily think of it. What is right and good? Not what I like and what is pleasant to me. I like... An uh, example, I like living... I like staying on the bed until 9 a.m. I like. That is not good. That is not good. You see that? And what I dislike, waking up early in the morning. So our minds, our master says that first I should decide, I should understand what is good and right in my life. So I must be doing it. I am supposed to do what is right and good. I am not supposed to do what I like and what is pleasant for me. You may think that it is a small issue, but our mind is filled with a tremendous amount of pressure. Any time you meet your dear and the near ones, your mind wants to blast, wants to tell a story of your suffering. Have you done that? Say yes. You, we, we all have done it. <laughs> we all have done it. <laughs> but now we are learning Eastern wisdom, so we have to become aware. We have a small issue, small pain, and we, by the story, we make it so big. So there the master says we have to install the shreyas. I have to stop thinking in that direction. I have to start thinking in the direction that what is right and good. What is right and good simply means that is good for everyone. How to find out what is right and good? That is good for everyone. That is good for me, that is right for me, that is good for you, good for everyone. So once we understand what is right and good in the intellect, then we have to live wisely. That is the meaning of living wisely. 
you are hungry you go to the kitchen that is living wisely you are hungry you eat food that is the meaning of eating wisely what what do you eat that is right and good yeah but we forget to live wisely from moment to moment There is a tremendous pressure of the mind. Think of this. Tomorrow, when you meet someone near and the dear ones, do you repeat your mind repeats the same stuff again and again? Do you wake up in the morning and get upset? You don't get asleep. You get an extreme fatigue. These are the examples that of mental and intellectual blindness. All the entire understanding of the Eastern wisdom is has two factors first to bring an end to the suffering and awaken to inner peace and happiness peace and happiness are within all of us so always live a life of awareness and alertness so that this mental and the intellectual blindness do not take over our life which results in unwise living daily mental and emotional upset And we experience a lot of challenges, a lot of problems. And it is only because of the blindness. Let us take a very common example. You don't like someone and who says, hi, good morning. Oh, what's a good in the morning? What is good in the morning? You are ready to react. You get hesitated. We get out of our mind. Can I talk to you? I'll talk to you later. Normally, we say our honey. Have you said this? Today I'm upset. I'll talk to you later. Now come on, sit with me. No, I, I cannot sit with you. I'm upset. Think of this. Very subtle level of mental and emotional blindness. And then we start narrating the story. You do not understand my situation. You do not understand my, my condition. This woman who tells me everything. She claims that she is my best friend. All are my best friend, you know, so I have no problem. So one day she started talking and I started asking about her illness. Uh, she and she got agitated and excited. No, no, that's a private. That's a privacy. I said last week you told me everything. That's why I'm asking you. It just happened. I said hell with you and hell with your illness. You know I'm the last person to ask you. Did you not tell me everything? Did you not write a long message? about your illness 
we are trying to understand that when these symptoms are there, we have we are suffering from mental and intellectual blindness. We have to get rid of it by thinking what is right and good in my life. I must follow. But now understand another part. Our eyes get distressed with the tears, heart full of depression, discouragement. We have a short and shallow breathing. Body trembles. I'm talking about other symptoms. We have a sad face. Today I was talking in the afternoon. No, 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 I have to, I, I am a coach so that, you know, I have to be serious. I said, remain serious, you know, I don't talk to serious people. Don't coach me. No, he was coaching me about marketing. Understand, this is very, very important. So conclusion is simple. Whenever we are mentally and emotionally overwhelmed, we get obsessed with the repeated thoughts. We have a short and shallow breathing. We get an extreme fatigue. All these are a couple of symptoms when we are mentally and emotionally, mentally, emotionally, intellectually blind. The fact is that because we are blind emotionally and mentally and intellectually, these thought finds their entry from the back door. And they live in our mind. They create a vicious cycle. We are in the kitchen preparing a tea, and mostly it happens the cup falls from your hand. You get upset. We are trying to seek sympathy, no sympathy at all. These are a few of the symptoms and the factors we reach with the mental and Now understand who is a seeker. So there are many people, majority of the people, they start living alone. They feel loneliness. They don't want to talk to someone. Or if they talk, they react, they get they agitated, they, are, they remain agitated. But in the midst of all these problems I'm undergoing, if I have a spark of light in my intellect that there is a solution, I start becoming a seeker. If our mind starts thinking why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm thinking like this, you are challenging your mind why you are repeating the same thing again and again about the people, about the situation, about the thing. If you don't do it, that blindness ultimately goes to grief and the suffering, extreme suffering. Think of this. Whatever the situation, condition, people, we live with it, we have to get rid of this blindness. And that blindness, first step is to start thinking, contemplating and reflecting why I'm repeating all this again and again. I've repeated millions of times. Let me stop and think of it. My dad died, and I, I had only one hope. My parents, my teacher, 
my relation was only one, my master. So I rushed to my master. He said, go back, perform all the rituals according to your culture, return, and then I will talk to you. So because there was a mentor, he was my mentor, so I had to follow him. That was very obedient man, seeker, or a student of him. I said, okay, I will do it. Then I returned and he said, can anyone control birth and death? You know, this teaching comes from the East and West. I cannot control the birth of anyone, including my own birth, including the death of anyone, including me. And then he said, Guru simply means, Gu means, the first label means ignorance, and the second label means removal of ignorance, the wisdom. Do you want to change the universal laws? No. Can you really change the universal laws? No. I cannot change my universal laws. So it means I have to live with it. Only the Newtons perhaps discovered the law of gravitation when he saw that apple falling on the ground. We always see apple falling on the ground, isn't it? We have seen hundreds of times. So what, there's only difference between the mind of a Newton and our own mind. So Eastern wisdom gives us, introduces those universal principles which helps us to remove this mental physical blindness that is the before dying uh, in a social term my master said you have to celebrate my birthday you have to enjoy in the monastery, prepare the best food, eat it, meditate, and then take this body and put it into the river, Ganges River, which is considered a sacred river. So we created a wooden box and we put his body into it, and we it went inside with the big holes in the wooden box so that the animals can eat that body. He said, don't, don't create my idol. Don't start worshipping and praying me. Not interested. And we did the same thing. So we have three things today that we understood. First is, what is mental and intellectual blindness? What are its symptoms and impact? In our daily living, we stop living wisely. We stop living wisely. Then we understood that our if our intellect starts thinking what is right and good. So when you continue to think what is right and good, your mind is going to change. And the third point that I reflected is I have to see the universal laws. They cannot be changed for me. And I told you the story of the Buddha, the mother whose son died and he approached Buddha. Can you make my son alive? So you see that how he treated. Buddha said, yes, I will do that. With that one condition. Have you heard that? No. Okay. So Buddha said to the mother, go to the nearby village. I'm staying in this village for a couple of days. Knock the door of every house. Ask them if no one died in their house, I will make your son alive. What a great teacher. 
take it, you know, let it absorb, let mind should absorb the story. So she went to many houses, every house is she knocked. Is there anybody who died in your house? Yes. She returned. And in the meantime, if there is no house where nobody died, not possible. So I lived in my house with my son. It is a universal law. How many of us has a delusion that at least let everyone die, I will not die. And the last point, I'm saying again and again last point. So this mental and intellectual blindness, if it continues for years and years and many generations, give rise to dogma, cult, belief. Don't follow the cult, dogma and belief because, no, it's my tradition. Come on, examine that tradition. Be very clear. Examine. Think. Contemplate, reflect. It, no, no, it's my cult, it's my dogma, it's my belief. No. It will continue to create a delusion. So if we are 100% clear, we free our mind with these cult, dogma, belief, that gives rise to a typical attitude and it keeps our mental and intellectual blindness, it will not bring an end to the suffering. It will keep you a sense of incompleteness, and that sense of incompleteness will continue to cause suffering in your life. This is what is known as emotional dependence. And the emotional dependence is not recognized, it is not dissolved. Our life continues to have suffering. Should I tell you, my master used to say, this is a mental dirt. We lived together with this mental dirt for so many years. And that paralyzes our intellect. Leads to psychological distress, physiological changes, and ultimately we, continue, we feel as if we are born due to the suffering. A lot of serious talks we have done, so let us start our practice. Close your eyes. <laughs> you have to think of it. We'll talk about this emotional dependence in the next session a little more so that we will be clear. So, eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Mind is facing within. Body is steady. So the body is steady. Mind is facing within. And so it happens in a small state that you become carefree and comfortable. So in why we make the body comfortable so that this mind does not run after 
the thought pertaining to the blindness, emotional and mental blindness, simple. So I'm saying just simple way. So you are comfortable. How you become comfortable? And I give you such a simple, even if you try being comfortable and being carefree every day for just a few minutes, only the first two steps, which I have been saying that they are preparatory steps. No, no, we will make it deeper. Higher steps by the self-awareness. What is that? You look at the neck joint, be there, feel, be there, feel. And that your feeling is your raising awareness. So when you feel the neck joint, you are aware you experience sensation, comfort, and steadiness. That is so simple. With eyes open or closed, sitting with a honey and no honey, watching TV or not. So you want to bring that state of the mindfulness in your daily life. So that will help you a great deal. So yes, so look at a couple of the joints. You simply look, you feel, and when you feel, experience, sensation, comfort, and steadiness. We have been learning this being comfortable and carefree for so long. So now you should, your mind should accept this, these steps. It's perfectly natural. So move the mind on the entire body, on the joints, be there. Awareness, feel, sensation, comfort, and steadiness. So the mind now have started looking inside, inside the body inside the head or the heart. But when it keeps on looking inside, you find the thoughts are coming and going. Thoughts and feeling and basis, they come and they go. So in order to understand clearly and raise your awareness, what I give you, I give you a metaphor to understand. Any metaphor you understand, it will work. The first metaphor I see, being carefree, you are a knower that you are standing across a road and watching the traffic. So that is a mental traffic of the thoughts and you are stepping back. You are watching, you are an observer, you are a knower. That these thoughts are coming and going. I can tell you it's a great step. But what happens? Thought comes, we get carried away, the blindness returns. We forget that we are the knower. We become an experiencer. And that is mental blindness. You're a dispassionate observer of the traffic standing across the road. You might have seen while crossing the road. Or, second metaphor, the birds are flying in the sky. The sky disappears when the birds disappear? No. So can you remain aware of the sky, whether the birds are there, you see them, or the birds have left? Simple. 
And another metaphor that I make you aware of, when there is a storm outside, you are standing outside, just outside your home. The big storm, you see it, you feel it. What you do, you simply move inside the home, close the door, you need not to fight with the storm, you need not to fight with any thought. There is no need. You are able to maintain your awareness. Well, understand in the future lessons that these two steps only can help you to go into a deeper and a higher meditative state. It is only because of this mental and intellectual paralysis at a subtler level. That is why we give a lot of other steps. So now see that when we talk of the breath awareness, so the first, you become aware of the breath. Aware of the breath. So what it means? So it means three-pointed awareness of the breath. What are the three-pointed? The breath is going in and out. Okay. You do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. That is okay. And you feel the sensation of the breath inside the nose when there is no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. We may think it is so easy, but it is not. A slight change in the impression enters from the back door of the mind, and we forget the three-pointed awareness of the breath. What I said, breath going in and out, first point of awareness. Let a guard, the, guard, the gated community, you know, the, sitting and he's watching. You're going and coming, that's all. And you feel the sensation inside the nose of the breath going in and out. And you do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. The moment the breath rate and the rhythm, which is habitual or natural, changes, it is because of the mind. Because it, it is changing habitually, unconsciously. You are doing the practice with the awareness, with the wisdom, with the knowledge. Because we forget. Because we forget the three points, awareness, because we, it becomes difficult to, con, difficult to remain aware, it is because of that we change the breath and that they are known as the breathing practices. So let us start breathing little deep, silent and slow. Start deep, silent, and slow. You are doing it, so it's a four. Now, what is deep, silent, and slow? How many points? How many points? First, it is deep. Second point, it is slow. Pay attention, it is slow. It means you are breathing slow. P3, point number three, it is silent. There is no noise. But if you add some knowledge point, the wisdom point, it helps a great deal. 
So let it there be a point for as you inhale, mind moves with the breath inside the spine. Inside the spine from the top to the tailbone. And when you exhale, that becomes another point. You move the mind as you exhale from the from the tail. Imaginary, imagine vision from the tailbone to the crown of the head. And then, if I add another fifth point of awareness, it is rhythmic. Means more or less that breathing pattern is the same, and the mind keeps looking into the dark space in the spine with the breath going in and out. Understanding again, when you understand it clearly and you can apply any time in your life, what exactly you have done or doing? You have gathered the threads of the mind scattered in many directions to one point. And what is that one point? That point is the spine. What may be coming and going, but you, you return. Point number one, it is deep, it is two, it is slow, third, it is silent. Fourth, that as you inhale, you move the mind with the inhalation into the spine, you move the mind with the exhalation into the spine, and five, rhythmic. So what happens, it leaves the mind, leaves that blindness which we discussed. And it happens in a day, if you do it consciously, it can have 100% consciousness, today is the success, 75% then couple of weeks and months, You know, such a simple step. Especially this step, if you continue even, say for example, more than 15 and 20 minutes without any obstruction, 
what is going to happen? The body will experience tingling, numbness, stillness, freezing, unusual experiences, poor sin, and we have to be with it. Need not to react to it. So now leave that deep side and slow uh, breathing and see that. Does that happen? We did almost for five minutes. So there are two ways. Directly you become aware of the body, entire body, from top to the toes. So on the skin, you experience the sensation deepens, relaxation is there, and calmness is there. That is one simple way. But it is better to do with the major parts of the body, and that's you already know it. The head and the neck. So your mind is fully aware of the head and the neck. You are there. You feel, you experience sensation, sensation, comfort, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. And then look inside those. And this is a sense of calmness and quietness. Or you may feel simply feel a sense of complete darkness, complete blankness. That gives some idea. As we continue to understand the journey deeper, we will realize what we are doing. So same way, look at the right arm. Be there. Looking means you are aware, you know the right arm, you feel the right arm. So when there is a feeling, there is a sensation, there is a relaxation, there is a stillness. Look inside, a sense of infinite blankness or a sense of quietness is there. Left arm. So when I say left arm, you are aware of the left arm. You feel, you know, you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness, calmness and quietness. The middle portion of the body, from the shoulder down in the front and the back, up to the waist, you are aware of that. The moment you are aware, you know it, you feel some sensation, continue to be there, or I can see you hold the mind there. So then you experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Look inside, a sense of calmness and quietness. Right leg. Sensation. Relaxation and stillness. Calmness and quietness. Left leg. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness, calmness, and quietness. So the meditation grows further. How? You return to the just a breath awareness, three pointed awareness of the breath. What is that three-pointed awareness? In a way, you are doing nothing. You are doing nothing, but you are aware what it means. You are aware. So we say just casually remain aware of the breath, the way it is going in and out. One point. You feel the sensation of the breath when it strikes the nose and no change.
But this three-pointed awareness should be done for a longer, longer period, as if uh, every day you are sleeping. Yes, we sleep. So before sleeping, you start becoming aware of the breath. Simple. And you will discover all the steps that we have done, it will happen naturally. They are aware of the breath, and ultimately, what will happen? That once the mind withdraws inside, this breath will become deeper and deeper. And after the deeper and the deeper breath, will have a sound sleep. I'm talking about when you do before sleeping, because your intent is to sleep, but not in a meditation. Sleep means the knowledge sleeps, awareness sleeps. So even if when I say you do nothing, you still you are aware of your breath. Uh... Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Uh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Bring the hands down, know your experiences. We will share our experiences. Followed by, if you have any question, we will take up that question. So how are you, Sophie? I'm very good, Girish. Thank you. I, um, it was interesting because, and I experienced that before, like at, a certain point of the meditation, I felt like, okay, my body was not, I was not feeling it any, and, but my mind came out very clear. It, it, it was like I was waking up. <laughs> that's the only oh, way I can describe oh, it. That's Things a, were completely that's clear a... and all the, you know, the dirt, the mental dirt was gone. <laughs> That's uh, very interesting. You see that when we understand, I think I should take up that. So we have three layers of the body. The first is the physical layer, which is what we know the physical body. So when we experience as, a, as if or seemingly we are not the body, so 50% of the mental dirt always goes because the mind, uh, the body, physical body is the servant of the mind. The servant is not there, it will not create any dirt. And at that time, the mind feels the calmness. Beautiful experience. So how are you, John? Hey, Girish. Um, <clears throat> I'm okay. <laughs> Um, I fell asleep during the, okay. the session, and so I don't have much to report. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even sleep is much better than the mind is continuously wandering. 
So the lowest state when the mind keeps wandering in meditation, sleep is the... and then sleep is better than that. But if we don't get a sleep, we live in higher awareness. So that is in a short way to explain it. That's good. How are you, Charlie? Hi, I'm good. Um, I felt that my body just um, became big and I disappeared inside it, like yeah. I was separate from it. And then I wanted to laugh. I don't know why, why, but I wanted to laugh. And um, yeah, so I had this really strange sensation of this like shell of a body, but I was floating yeah, around yeah. inside it. Um, and I wanted to ask really quickly, I've, I've wanted to ask every week, we do the, th you do the three Om Shanties, um, perhaps after everyone's talked, you could talk about why you do that, the chanting. At the end, yes, yes. I think that I do the same thing. Yeah, now there is no echo. So when I I do the chanting, because according to the Eastern wisdom, at the concluding meditation, the chanting brings the mind of a teacher and the seeker together. So even if something is left, the mind of a teacher with that chanting goes with the mind of a seeker and it goes very deeper. But why another explanation of three times of chanting that all our, I think I covered that, all our suffering, we have millions of suffering. One is suffering because of marriage, the other is suffering because of divorce, the third is suffering because of living lonely. One is suffering because they have they don't have money, the other is suffering because of lot of money. Bill Gates. So all these sufferings can be categorized into three. So that is why we do Om Shanti 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 three times. First to the physical suffering. First to the physical suffering, second to the natural calamities. We also suffer because of the natural calamities. The storm, COVID is one, a uh, storm, flooding, etc., etc. And now the heat waves in the entire Europe. We don't, where we do not have a control. And the third kind of, is the mental suffering. What we discussed today and we have been talking a lot. The mental suffering accounts for 90%. No, we suffer because of the flood when the flood comes. But we are already flooded with the blindness of the mind all the time, days after days, weeks after weeks, months after months. Then you see that emotional, mental blindness, paralysis. So we do Shanti. That is why we do Shanti, Shanti, Shanti three times. Physical, natural suffering, and the mental. How are you, Anne? Uh, I'm fine. I was not that successful to keep my mind away, so I tried to intrude. Oh, so you so had to was... But I still feel more calm than I did yes. in the beginning. That is good. That is good. Uh, you had beautiful thoughts. That is why you are not able to drive those thoughts away from the mind. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> almost that. Almost. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I believe I will just reflect on this. Mm. If the knowledge is not there, the understanding of the mind is not there clearly, then the thoughts overwhelms, the feeling and the past and the memory overwhelms. Why it overwhelms? The one thought starts fighting with the other. No, no, I have to control. No, I'm doing meditation. No, then I have a thought. Then I'm doing meditation. 
but they both come from the same mind. Mm -hmm. It is the same mind which is thinking. So we have to drop both. Mm -hmm. Now that is understanding. We have to drop both. We have to drop both. I love you, I hate you. <laughs> so, but yes, that <laughs> John is saying, look at this crazy weird guy. <laughs> so, so when I'm able to leave the both opposing thoughts, then I'm an observer. I'm a knower. I step back. That is the meaning that I'm standing across and watching the traffic. Then I'm watching the traffic means I'm watching the car. Whether the car is 1985 Lincoln or today's Mercedes, it is the same. You see? That level of dispassion should be there. And that comes by practice, 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 practice. So how are you, Mead? I I began far from home. And far little, from. little by little, I returned home. Returned home. Good. Good. You see that. So I have only, yes, continue if you want to say more. It made such a difference. How far away I was, I didn't know until I paused and could feel that. And then little by little, you guided me home. Beautiful. That's a good, good experience that when I feel at home. You know, the real self is the real home. Once we are absorbed there, the mind recognizes, then there is no turning back. That is why it is known as awakening. Meditation leads to awakening. So awakening is irreversible process. So we have to continue the journey until awakening takes place. That is what we say. That is all for today. Thank you. We will meet again. Namaste. Namaste.